Welcome to At Home with Music as we continue our journey from medieval to modern. And today we're going to talk just for a little bit about Ars Nova, the new art. It was based in France and Italy and developed out of the Ars Antiqua, which we looked at in the last video. During this period, more secular music was composed. The rhythms became more complex. Other intervals like thirds and sixths were used more frequently. The leading composer of the French Ars Nova was Guillaume de Mechou. <laughs> it's a fun name to pronounce. Guillaume de Mechou. And he was born in the Champagne region of France around 1300, and he died somewhere around 1377. So, as we get further into the history of Western music, we're starting to get more information about composers. And Machu was a poet as well as a composer. He was educated to serve in the church and had taken holy orders. He joined the court of John, Duke of Luxembourg, and King of Bohemia around 1323, and he served as the king's secretary until that king was killed at the Battle of Cresci in 1346. Sometime before this, Machon had settled in Reims. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but that's where he remained until his death, serving in the cathedral there. And he was greatly sought after as a composer. And he was sought out by important patrons, including the future Charles V of France. And his poetry was known throughout Europe. And his admirers included Geoffrey Chaucer. So Mechou is probably best remembered for being the first composer to create a polyphonic setting of the ordinary of the Catholic Mass. So you might be wondering, what's the ordinary of the Catholic Mass? Well, those are the parts of the liturgy that do not change. They include the Kyrie, the Gloria, the Credo, the Sanctus, and the Agnus Dei. So those are all Latin terms, so I'll tell you briefly what they all mean. If you hear Kyrie eleison, that's Latin for Lord have mercy. Gloria, of course, means Gloria in excelsis, glory to God in the highest. Credo simply means I believe, like that's where we get our word creed. Sanctus means holy, and Agnus Dei means the Lamb of God. And so this new style of the 14th century, called the Ars Nova, the new art, by the composers of the period, can be heard in Machon's music. His Notre Dame Mass is important to music history because it's the first known setting of an entire Mass to polyphonic music, to polyphony. If you listen to the Agnus Dei, which you're now hearing in the background, the two lower voices sing a theme based upon a rhythmically altered Gregorian chant that's known as the Cantus Firmus. Its three-part form and polyphonic texture is common in sacred music. If you're listening to this, you might think, wow, these, these are strange harmonies. They sound dissonant, they sound hollow, but occasionally you hear what you might recognize as a regular chord. Interestingly, both the Agnus Dei and the Kyrie have three sections, and that was thought to symbolize the Holy Trinity. So this new polyphonic style caught on with composers and paved the way for the flowering of choral music in the Renaissance. Although today, the Mass is probably Meshul's best known work, he also composed dozens of secular love songs also in the polyphonic style of the new art. And just like when we talked about the songs of the troubadours and the trouviers, these songs talk about courtly love, capturing all the joy and the hope, and pain and heartbreak of courtly romance. The secular songs of the Middle Ages eventually evolved into this great outpouring of lovesick lyricism embodied in the music of the great Renaissance madrigalists. 
people who wrote madrigals. And so we're going to learn more about madrigals in a later video. Another interesting thing about Guillaume Michon, he is the first composer in Western music history who seemed to be conscious of his artistic achievements and of his place in history. In other words, he was a famous composer and he knew he was a famous composer. So to assure his place in history, he saw to it that his work was painstakingly copied and artfully illustrated. So he's the first known example of a composer preserving his own work for posterity. In our next lesson, I will introduce the music of the Renaissance. Thanks for watching. I encourage you to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. And in our next video, we're going to introduce you now to the music of the Renaissance.